Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, Turn Scott's further into the point to line distance formula. And now look at the geometric proof. I'll go one of the versions of the geometric proof and I'll call that proof number one. I might go over a second in a later video, so uh, stay tuned for that, uh, which I may do. And now let's just dive right in. So note that just like in the algebraic proof, which was in my earlier video, and you can see that in the description below, this proof that I'm going to go over is only valid for slanted lines, but the final result uh, nonetheless is applicable to horizontal and vertical lines, ex uh, exactly as I showed in my algebraic proof. So make sure to watch that video. It's a good prerequisite for this video. So let's just go ahead and draw this line. Let's say we have a random slanted line like this, and this is the y x axis like that. And uh, this line right here has the equation ax plus b, just a line plus c, as I went over in my earlier video as well, like that. And yeah, this formula is yeah, similar to the y equals, or the same thing as the y equals mx plus b equation of a line, just rearranged differently. So let's say we have a line here, and now let's say we have a point right here, and we want the, and this is called, let's just write it as p, x, 0, these are the coordinates and y0, so that's the point there. Yeah, all right, so we have this. Now the distance to this, as I showed in my earlier video, is it's just a perpendicular line across. So this distance would be perpendicular. <clears throat> yeah, so the distance from the point to the line is just d, like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw a vertical line perfectly downwards like this, and this has an angle theta here, and at this point, I'm going to call this, well, the coordinates at this point is going to be x0. That's going to be exactly the same as this. It's a vertical line. I'm going to call this point ys. Or actually, instead of ys, I'll just write it as y1. So y0, y1. And now the vertical distance across here is going to be just, I'm just going to use an absolute value. So the absolute value, because we're looking at distance, y0, the difference between that and this one here, minus y1, like that. Yeah, so we have this angle, we have this distance, and we have this distance across. Well, we want to solve for d. So to do that, what we need to first uh, take account is, well, what we can do is note that the rise of a run. So if we look at this ax, let's put this here, ax plus by plus c equals to 0. If you rearrange this, we get y, or, or just move this equal to here, move this over. So we have negative ax minus c, then divide by the b, we just get it like this, and that's what y equals to, where this part right here, the slope is just going to be equal to, again, it's, slope is rise over run, and that is this part right here, which equals to negative a over b, like that. Yeah, so that is what we have there, rise over run. In this case, what we're dealing with now is, I'll extend this uh, outwards, we're going to have a triangle like this. I'll draw it really big. Rise over run across here. This has a negative. Yeah, this has a negative a, but I'm just going to be looking at distance or uh, absolute values. So I'm going to look at this as an absolute value of a downwards like that, an absolute value of b like that. And this is a right angle triangle. Now, this is vertical. Since this is vertical, this is the same angle there. So notice the similarities now. Yeah, so look at what we have here. We have an angle here that's exact same as this, because this, all it is is just a vertical line, is a vertical line there. So what we can do is uh, correlate these two here. So I'll write note that we can apply this d with this, well, we know these values. Well, we, we can uh, simplify these later. But what I'll do now is note that uh, right here, cosine theta, if we look at the actually the, the sine of it. Yeah, the sine of it is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine theta equals to d over, so d over the hypotenuse there is y0 minus y1, like that. And now we could re relate that with this right here, where we have sine theta equals to now absolute value of b over the hypotenuse on this side. And this hypotenuse, I'm just going to write this as absolute value of h, like that. So now we have it like this. So this is what we have, and I'll be using this soon. Yeah, I'll just use that actually now. So what I'll do now is, so we could drag this all the way down here, and I'll write 
Thus, what we end up having is, yes, yeah, so thus we have sine theta, we can equate the two together, equals to, yeah, d over uh, y zero minus y one. So d over y zero, absolute value uh, minus y one, which equals to absolute value of b over the absolute value of the hypotenuse there. And again, note right here, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll write note that this hypotenuse is using Pythagoras like that. So using uh, Pythagoras, so or yeah, Pythagoras or Pythag Pythagorean theorem. What we have is absolute value of h well squared equals to absolute value of a a squared plus absolute value of b squared like that, that's just uh, the sides of a right triangle. And then these are absolute values, when you square them, it's always gonna be positive. So what we end up having is is just a, well, if we square this both sides, we'll just do the yeah, square both sides to get the h. So what we have now is absolute value of h, we're always dealing with positive, so we look at the positive side of this, and this is going to be square root, and this is just the same thing as writing a squared plus b squared. Yeah, so the absolute values just go away. Like that, so that is what h is equal to, and we could throw that in there. Yeah, so if we throw that in there and put that down here, what we end up having is the distance d is equal to the difference there. I'll move that over, so I'll move this over, and then we have equals to uh, y zero minus y one times absolute value of b. Yeah, times absolute value of b. Then divide this all by well, absolute value of h is going to be square root a squared plus b squared, like that, and it's always gonna be positive inside the square root, like that. Also, on the recall, just quickly recall for the absolute values, if you have something, let's say, like an x, y, absolute value of x, y, it's the same thing as writing absolute value of x times it by absolute value of y, whatever this x is, it could be a subtraction, like that. So that means we could just remove this, multiply that out inside, and then remove the absolute value, put that all the way around, so y, uh, zero minus y one, like this bracket times it by b, absolute value. Where this could be our, uh, our x or, or whatnot in this case, like that. So then we have square root a squared plus b squared, like that. Let's put this around there. And also, so also note that to get for this y one, we know that the point x0 and y1 is on the line on the line ax plus b y plus c equals to 0 and you can see that right here that's the line and this point is on it so if it's on it what we can do is well we could remove this y1 and instead how to deal with an x0 so we could plug this point inside we have ax0 plus b y one plus c equals to zero. Rearrange all of this, move this over, we get a, well on the right side is going to be negative a x zero minus c divided by b. <laughs> and that's our y one like that. And uh, yeah, this, so that's our y one. And we can drag that all the way inside, Let's do a better box, angle like that. So we could drag this inside there, and what we finally have is, is and then it has it like that. So thus we get, we throw that in there, and then go back down, thus, thus the distance, d, is equal to, and now we have the absolute value of y0 minus y1, so y0 minus y1, which is, this right here, but that's negative, so the negatives all cancel. We have an ax0 plus c over a b, and I put a bracket like this, because now we're multiplying it by b, like that, which is just here. And then all over square root, a squared plus b squared, and we have this like that. Yeah, so that is what we have there. Now when you could just multiply this out, the b cancels, and we're finally left with d equals two, and then we have this b's cancel, so we have absolute value ax zero, and then I'm gonna move this in front, y zero times b, or b y zero, and then here's a c by itself, 
absolute value and then over square root a squared plus b squared like that I'll put this better here equals the distance there and it's exactly the same thing as I showed in my earlier video and that is a distance to the line or the shortest distance to the line from the point or the or from the point or from the line to the point or the point to the line etc anyways that's all for today if you follow along it's pretty interesting uh, derivation and it's a much quicker one than the one in my earlier video but make sure to watch both just to see the difference and it was all for today like always you can download these exact notes in the link below as well as viewing these notes on steam in article format at mes follow me there and also make sure to check out my math forums and post some cool math or science related stuff you find anyways that's all for today thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution